All right, so I've got a special guest tonight, and we are going to talk about all of his tremendous accomplishments for Parental Alienation Awareness Day events. And before we have our conversation, I want to give a little bit of history about Parental Alienation Awareness Day. It's a very important day. So April 25th, 2019 will be the 14th annual International Parental Alienation Awareness Day. During the week surrounding April 25th, Parental Alienation Awareness Day observances will be held all around the world to create awareness and education about parental alienation. Parental Alienation Awareness Day was created by Sarvi Emo, and with the support of Dr. Richard Warshak, the first Parental Alienation Awareness Day was held in April 2006. So for more information about Parental Alienation Awareness Day, you can visit the website bubblesofloveday.com. So tonight, I'm going to be chatting with Kenneth Pascal, and we're going to talk about the great things that your organization does to create awareness for parental alienation. And the organization that you're with is Alabama Family Rights Association. Um, so I've got a few questions to ask you, but before that, I just want to tell the people watching a little bit about you, okay? Okay. All right. So Kenneth Pascal is a retired U.S. Army First Sergeant, a child activist, a fit parent, and an advocate for protecting parents' fundamental rights. Kenneth maintained a top secret security clearance and served his country for over 21 years in the United States military. Despite his love and dedication to the military, Kenneth chose to retire and move to Alabama so he could spend more time with his daughter, Abigail. In doing so, Kenneth participated in Abby's school programs and served on the PTO board at her school. Um, you were a very, very involved parent very involved. And Kenneth um, and his ex-wife divorced in 2008 in Alabama. After the divorce, his ex-wife moved to California with Abby. Since October 2011, Kenneth has only seen Abby one time, despite his desire to be an active parent in her life. Kenneth has no criminal record of any kind and no reason to be denied an important role in Abby's life. Kenneth is the state president and director of governmental affairs for the Alabama Family Rights Association. He has been a guest on numerous radio and television programs and has been featured in and helped contribute to many printed publications on the importance of the child-parent relationship. Kenneth's main focus is bringing awareness and education about a child's need and natural right to have both mother and father in his or her life and the dangers of parental alienation that often have lasting traumatic effects. He has advised and consulted with many mothers, fathers, grandparents, judges, attorneys, legislators, and educators on this topic. And if you don't mind, Kenneth, I'm gonna share how we met because I think it's a fun story. I like it. <laughs> so um, in 2012, I was on the board of directors with PAAO, Parental Alienation Awareness Organization in Canada. And one of my duties that year was to help people all around the world to host their own Parental Alienation Awareness Day event and to get proclamations for Parental Alienation Awareness Day. And I got an email from a gentleman and he said, my name is Kenneth and I'm having a Parental, Alien Parental Alienation Awareness Day event and I'd like to get some proclamations. Can you help me with that? And I said, sure, I would love to. Uh, so we started communicating. And I could see right away that you were really, really awesome at getting proclamations. And so I kind of saw it as that you and I were having like a little friendly competition, you know? I thought this is really great. You know, I've got somebody to kind of have a fun competition with. And I kind of pictured that we might have it as an annual thing to have like a public competition. It would kind of inspire and motivate people to get proclamations, right? Um, but I mean, you just blew it out of the water and 
And we used to joke in our house that year, every time you get a proclamation, I would be like, Kenneth in Alabama, you got another proclamation. I can't keep up with this guy. You know, I just, I couldn't keep up with you. And so um, I think it's kind of fun to share where we ended up that first year, 2012. Um, in 2012, I ended up getting 25 proclamations in Texas, which I thought was really good. It is really good, right? It's good. Um, but in Alabama, your first year, 2012, of getting proclamations, you got 30 proclamations. So that was a lot. So just to kind of um, put it in perspective for people watching, in 2012, the way it ended up was we got 63 Parental Alienation Awareness Day proclamations around the world. So worldwide, we got 63 proclamations. 25 of those proclamations were from Texas and 30 of them were from Alabama. So 55 of, of the 63 proclamations in 2012 were from Texas and Alabama. Um, but after that first year, I decided to not have an annual competition with you. There, there was no way. <laughs> um, and then in February 2013, um, you and I went to Washington, D.C., and we met with elected officials about parental alienation and about family court and about that children need to be able to have unobstructed relationships with both of their parents and both sides of their families. And, and we can talk about those things another time. We could talk about um, family court issues and legislation and all that, but tonight we're just gonna talk about Parental Alienation Awareness Day and Bubbles of Love because uh, you're really the king of it. I mean, you're really the king of Parental Alienation Awareness Day uh, events and incorporating bubbles of love into that. Now, I know you're going to say it's not just you. You're not the king. You have a team, um, Alabama you. Family Rights Association. And so when I say you, I just want you to know that I, I do mean Alabama Family Rights Association. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know you're going to say it's not just me. It mm. you know takes a lot of people, and we have to help each other. And, and, and we do, and that's very, very, very important. So, now, I'm going to ask you some questions. Do you want to say anything before I start asking you questions? Well, <laughs> you know me very well. <laughs> <laughs> I, know you very, I know you very well. Um, you and I ended up becoming really good friends, and, and I appreciate your support. And, and I think that we are very supportive of each other of each other's events and um, each other's advocacy. And I think that that's very, very important. And I believe you agree with that, that, that it's important that we support other advocates uh, in our efforts to, to help children be able to love both parents and both sides of their family. Um, one, of, one of the things I wanted to mention that kind of jumps out at me, and this was not one of my questions that I had made up in advance, but in your bio, it talks about a child's need and natural right to love both of their parents and love both sides of their family. And I wanted to ask you about that. You don't, you don't talk about, um, It, at least in your bio, you're talking about that a child needs that much more than you're just talking about, you know, that's our right. That's our right. Um, so can you kind of talk about that, that I feel like that's important to you is to talk about that. It's not just that, yes, we have rights, you know, children have a right to have relationships with both parents and we have our rights as parents. And we hear a lot about that in our advocacy circles right where people are like I, it's my right it's my right but uh, let's talk about if you don't mind because I know uh, uh, your language you often say a child needs that so can you kind of talk about your thought on that when you approach people and and you talk about that a child needs to have a relationship with both of their parents yeah. well it just um, well thank you that's very uh, that's the uh, own purpose um, conversation in, in my bio is a child, they have that need, but they also they have that natural desire. You know, every mm -hmm. single child is, is born, they have that natural instinct desire to love both half themselves, both parents. And if you restrict that or hinder that, it creates major 
it's just a systemic problem. And we've seen it in every community, every state throughout the country, throughout the country, throughout the world. And oftentimes we get caught up in the this battle, this legal system, and we, we do start talking about the father's rights, the mother's rights, and we lose the most important thing that we should be talking about, which is the child rights and natural desire. And so that's why it kind of goes back to with the bubbles is the bubbles, it flows freely because it is created to flow freely. But if you put your hand there when you blow the bubble, you, you restrict that. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to reach its maximum potential. Um, so the same thing with a child. If you hinder that natural desire and love the child has and uh, want with both parents, um, many times we see our kids falling in the very unhealthy way. They less likely to reach their maximum potential. And we see that in our um, behavior problems. Uh, mm-hmm. so they so say we have a drug problem. I think we have a heart problem. A child is having reaching out, need a desire, our correction facilities. It's just such a systemic domino effect when you cut off a, uh, or restrict the child's natural love. So that's my mo- that's my main focus is a child have a natural desire. And it's almost like a compass inside. It's, spin- it's spinning around. And then if you restrict that and just um, – it breaks. Just a traumatic experience. I mean, experience. As you are aware, uh, some of our mental health professionals say that's the worst form of child abuse that exists. How they have that natural desire to love, and when you restrict that, it's just uh, there's no bruises, you know, from physical abuse, but the mental traumatic experience that so many kids, thousands and thousands of kids experience. So that's why that's my main focus is to advocate for kids having that natural right in a relationship with both their parents? Well, I, I think that um, it's so important that we talk about it from that perspective because, you know, we can, uh, you know, protest and yell and be angry and say, well, it's my right. It's my right. But I think what the world needs to know is that, This is a health crisis. This is an epidemic. And studies show that when a child is um, denied or deprived a relationship with one of their parents, a fit parent, then that child suffers really serious uh, physical and emotional um, issues. So it really truly is a health crisis crisis when that happens and it children do need that they it, it's not just a it's their right or it's our right children literally need to be able to have relationships they need to be able to love both of their parents that you know they are they're ha- you know they're half of each of those parents right that's part of their identity that that's part of who they are and think about what it does to a child if if they are told half of you is not not worthy of love half of you is horrible it does very 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 damaging things to kids so it's a health crisis and i'm really i'm really glad that you focus on the child's need to have a relationship with both parents and and i did feel like that was probably intentional in your bio and and so i did want to ask you about that yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about Parental Alienation Awareness Day. Okay. When in Alabama, you've really turned into Parental Alienation Aware- Awareness Month, and really, it's kind, you've kind of turned it in, into a year-round thing. Um, but I've got some questions. I'm just going to ask you the questions so we can kind of stay on track here, right? Um, so do you remember how it felt when you were putting together your very first Parental Alienation Awareness Day event and when you got that very first proclamation. And I I ask this because I think people who are considering having their first event um, would be helped and inspired by you recalling how you felt the first time you had an event. How did you feel? Did you you feel, uh, you know, nervous about it? And and what was your first event like? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say... Nervous um, because I kind of know our local leaders, and um, but it was different, you know. 
uh, normally in April, you hear you see the proclamation for the National Child Abuse Prevention Month, and they you know have the pinwheels, the universal color, uh, you know, blue for child abuse and the ribbons, and and this was a little bit different. It's saying it's a form of child abuse, and most people are unaware of it. So the proclamation, the city you know, leaders was very supportive of that. So now you have this proclamation. Now you got to go out and do something with it. And so it was, um, you should start off small, you know, it's a couple people. And then from there, you know, uh, people will start walking up to you and asking, what are you doing? Why are you blowing the bubbles? And that's the intent. You, the goal is to have people come to you and, and you get to explain that, um, you know, the bubble is such a powerful illustration called you blow the bubbles, it flows freely, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just the natural love kids have and they desire for both their parents. And then I just share with them in Alabama, and approximately 40,000 kids have to restrict their love for the most part. And that's one of the worst forms of mental abuse. So it was um, exciting. Um, and I was a little surprised at the people reception um, because it's, it's a topic no one really took on, nobody want to talk about, but the bubbles using that tool to pull people in, to create the conversation. I was, kind of surprised at that, uh, at the reception. Um, so that kind of got me fired up for the following year, you know, okay, well, start off small. Okay, mm -hmm. next year, let's kind of kick it open notch. Let's try to do something, <laughs> reach out to other uh, other groups, and organizations, and and, um, and then people from social media start asking questions, well, how can I do it over here in this part of the town or this city, and how do I do this? Well, it's, here's a flyer go out to the park with, with one of your your friends, blow bubbles, and then next year you'll be surprised at the impact you have. Well, so I think we I think we should mention, um, like I said earlier, Parental Alienation Awareness Day started in 2006, um, and it was uh, created by Sarvi Emo. And then a few years later, I believe it was 2010, um, she added uh, bubbles of love that we're talking about. And so... Bubbles of love is kind of like a, a ceremony or an activity that you can add to your Parental Alienation Awareness Day event. And, and what you mentioned is that it symbolizes that just like bubbles flow freely, a child's love for both parents needs to be able to, to you know, flow freely. Um, but also, bubbles of love is a great way to attract people to your event um, they're curious and it looks like you're having a good time and they come over and they want to talk to you and find out what's going on. And then I know you always have plenty of bottles of bubbles. And so when people come up to you at your event and say, what's going on, you give them a bottle of bubbles and especially if they have kids and then you tell them what the event is about and it opens that conversation. So um, it sounds like to you, having the bubbles of love as part of your Parental Alienation Awareness Day events is really an important element. Right. Well, I think it's the key element, and call even just career alienation awareness by itself, people are like, okay, they see it, they like, what is that? They keep they keep the distance, but the bubbles actually is the goal is to pull them to your area, to your information table, where you have an opportunity to share that literature or more information with them. And, um, but there's two options to do this also, well, there's at least two options. One is, you know, you have the signs out there protesting, you know, mm -hmm. the system messed up, uh, my ex, this and that, that's an option. Mm -hmm. And then here's the other option of the template that was created, like, like I said, you know, 14 years ago, you know, using the bubbles as a tool to start the conversation. And so those two options, my question is, which one is more likely to get you to, to your goal that you desire? Right. And some people, um, because it is emotional uh, when someone, when you, your time is restricted, you've been alienated. Yes, it's a painful process. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, yelling and screaming, what will that accomplish? It may make you feel good temporarily, but our goal is to bring awareness to his form of child abuse so we can stop it. So the Bubbles for Love uh, campaign is is um, been very. Um, We've been very successful here in Alabama, and each year it, it grows, it keeps it growing. We're doing partnerships with other organizations, other groups. 
Um, and some of the cities, I think they kind of c- competing too because of <laughs> you know, the, the pictures on social media, and then they see this town in front of their city hall, and all they're blowing bubbles with the entire staff. What it next year, the town down the street said, "Well, okay, we want to do something," you know. So it's really a great tool, but so it's it's family friendly, but the but the goal is to bring awareness to this form of child abuse that's traumatizing our kids. Right. I think that you structure it in such a way that, like I said earlier, it's approachable and people come up and ask you about it and then you can have the conversation. And that's what Parental Alienation Awareness Day is all about, is creating awareness. And so you want to have it to be approachable. The more approachable it is, the more people talk to you, the more awareness that you're going to create. So that first year you had just one event. Is that right? And, and then, and then as the years went on, you have had more and more and more events. You don't have just one parental alienation awareness day event. Um, now in Alabama, how many awareness, I want to say awareness day, but you know, related to awareness day, how many parental alienation awareness day bubbles of love events do you have in Alabama approximately? Well, I'll say the ones that Apple we directly coordinate, um, probably 2024. Uh, however, there's other events uh, that's taking place throughout the 67 counties, but the ones that we directly uh, coordinate is between 2024. Um, and each year, each year they grow. And, and these events, once again, it could be three or four people, just the staff and certain uh, business owners. They say, okay, the staff is going to go outside and blow bubbles on April 25th at noon. And so versus a larger event. So whether it's small, it's a couple of people or 3,000 people. We have one event where we um, know on average about 3,000 fans coming to a baseball stadium. And that's definitely one of the largest events that we do each year. And, and what a great partnership that, for the entire baseball staff, general manager is saying, we would like to partnership and bring awareness to his form of child abuse by incorporating this during our pregame. And um, it's pretty, pretty awesome. You know, we have a young lady come in. She's a, a singer. She actually wrote a special song called Love and um, pretty powerful. And once again, 3,000 people in one location. And that size of an audience, you know someone in the stadium, probably quite a few is going to be alienated from one of their parents. Or you have the target parent, targeted parent or, or, the, or, or the alienated parent in that stadium. So what a powerful message for them to come and um, be a part of. So about, like I said, 2024 uh, events, it's more than that, but it's the ones we directly uh, coordinate is about 2024. And like I said, they keep, keep growing, you know. So you have 20 to 24 Parental Alienation Awareness Day slash Bubbles of Love events. And you partner with restaurants and coffee shops. And I've seen you set up uh, information booths at shopping centers. And you partner with... um, baseball teams for their opening day and you said about 3,000 people come to that to the opening day of baseball and it's just genius I mean really think about how much awareness you're creating just at at the opening day of baseball 3,000 people and I want to kind of circle back around to that you're partnering with these businesses and organizations and sports teams because they, they, they are happy to partner with you because it's a positive thing. And that enables you to, to create so much awareness and so much education that you wouldn't be able to, to do on your own. So having it be a really positive thing that's approachable and the community wants to partner with you is really, really key 
to creating more awareness and education. Um, I know one year, I always make my event family friendly too. And so family friendly, and we try to usually make it pet friendly too, so people can bring their dogs, right? And we and we say, you know, it's it's fun for all ages. Now we do have speeches, so there's education there, right? But uh, we never say it's a protest. It's not a protest. It's it's for awareness. And so when you make it approachable and you have activities, like you have bubble blowing, um, a lot of times we have uh, face painting. And a few years we've had people make balloon animals and we've had clowns and, and all kinds of stuff. But when you've got those 3,000 people at a baseball game, and you know that a lot of those families are dealing with that dynamic that are there watching the game, but not just that, that's 3,000 people that you've just um, created awareness and education with, and they're going to go home and talk to other people about it. And I know you're going to have literature there that they can pick up, right? So they're going to go home and they're going to have information in their hand. And so this is something that you couldn't accomplish that amount of awareness and education if if it wasn't family friendly and if it wasn't approachable. So I think that the fact that you do that is really important to impress upon people. Well, I think it's very important. I have been criticized for that approach, but that's just, I always tell people, can you go create an event that works and then I will join in with that program. But, um, but like I said, my goal is, our organization goal is to make sure we stay uh, keep it non-adversarial and stay mm -hmm. focused on the mission. It goes back to the question you asked earlier is uh, the child have a natural desire. So how do we create an environment to have that conversation? And um, and so hopefully we will continue to keep uh, growing each year until we can make this uh, formal child abuse, um, uh, make it um, non-existent. You know, the only way we can do it is with peer, well, with public awareness Change requires two ingredients, uh, awareness and education. And then if we achieve that, we was, our goal will be, will be met. Um, so, yes, family-friendly is mm -hmm. the goal because it's not too many leaders, community leaders will want to just partner with a rowdy, hostile group of people. Right. If, if you had gone to, if you went to the, whoever you have to go to, to be a part of opening day at baseball. If you went to them and you said, hey, can I have a protest at your uh, opening day of baseball? <laughs> they would say, no, dude, get out of here, <laughs> you know? But you're coming in saying, hey, can I give a bottle of bubbles to all 3,000 people that come to opening day of baseball and make it fun? And, and they're gonna be like, yeah, awesome. That's great. You know, this year I'm partnering with um, a restaurant for our uh, Parental Alienation Awareness Day. It's one of those, you know, outdoor, casual, really fun, family-friendly places. And I told them I will bring bottles of bubbles to give to everybody that is having lunch at your restaurant that day. And the restaurant is really excited. So, you know, if you approach it that way, you're going to have you know, people that have baseball games and restaurants and, and other businesses. I've even had people ask me, can you come to our thing and bring your bubbles? I'm known as the bubble lady here in this area. And so, you know, I've got like big buckets and activities and stuff. So if, if you really do it the right way, people, they want to partner with you. They want you to come to their event and bring your bubbles of love. And I'm sure that, that you experience that a lot. Well, yes. It's, um, I was talking about our youth. Well, I don't know if I mentioned this time. Our youth uh, baseball and softball team, the park, uh, the park and rec board, uh, they they actually approached me, our organization. They said, instead of April twenty fifth, could we do this in March? Because it's the opening day for youth baseball. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and um, but their point, what they saw is sometimes we have a lot of kids doing an extracurricular activity. Uh, sometimes the parents, because of their elevating behavior, they take that also to the field. Sure. And so the park and rec, they would say, well, this program works. Mm -hmm. So let's incorporate this, that we know this works. Let's incorporate that into our opening day for, day for baseball uh, for our kids. And then hopefully that would deter the parents uh, from having 
such behavior on the field, but most importantly, those kids know that um, we care about them. You know, it just occurred to me that when you are doing this for, say, opening day of baseball, uh, and and I, I believe they make an announcement, right? They kind of tell about um, Alabama family rights and about bubbles of love at the beginning of these baseball games. In a sense, you're not just creating awareness and education. You're really actually preventing some uh, – you're actually creating some prevention right there on the spot. Right. You know, because that has been announced right there in front of those parents, you know, that we need to all support these kids and – love on them and let them love both parents and just enjoy their experience. So it really in that situation, I think it's, you're creating awareness, education, and also prevention. Right. So I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm really, I'm really amazed by all you do. And I think that it's really important for people to know um, how you do it because you generate so much awareness and education and so speaking of that, that you generate so much awareness and education, I think it's fun for people to know that, now let's kind of recap, you, you have about, Alabama Family Rights Association has about two dozen Parental Alienation Awareness Day related events. And at some of your events, there are 3,000 people. So how many bottles of, of bubbles, and you give everybody a bottle of bubbles. You don't. You never tell anybody. Bring your own bubbles, right? You always provide bubbles. Well, yes, the yeah. events that we 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 host, yes, and um, so that's and that's uh, once again that's just letting people know that you know our goal is to help facilitate that particular area. You know, if you mm -hmm. if you uh, give me, you know, versus saying, listen, I, we will provide um, you this opportunity to join our efforts to stop child abuse most people will be like sure so how many bottles of bubbles approximately does alabama family rights association give away every year um, related to parental alienation awareness i would say it's maybe the last three or four years um probably close to four thousand bottles um and we still working on trying to work on another major event even bigger than the 33,000 bottles we're trying to hopefully finalize that in the next couple of days but there's another minor league baseball team they estimating they will have 30 3400 fans um April the 25th the night of and um they would like to host a similar uh, event you know, during a pregame because they say when it comes to baseball, they're champions, but when it comes to child abuse, they want to be champions too. So, so they'll, they'll keep, keep it up to maybe 7,000 bottles of bubbles there. So, uh, still, so we have some planning to work to do on that, but the goal is let's fill the entire state up with bubbles for our kids. You're going to give away 7,000 bottles of bubbles this year. Yep. That's, that's the goal. That's the plan, you know. Wow. I, I think you'll do it. I know you'll do it. I know you. You'll do it. You'll probably do 8,000 bottles of bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but once again, we have to remember each bubble that's blown, it represents our kids. It represents mm -hmm. their natural love and their, their desire um, to love both of their parents. But many, they're un unable to do that. So that's what keeps me going because our kids, uh, many of them, they cannot speak up for themselves. Uh, they're just innocent. And I think we, um, as adults, we should you know, stand up for them. Absolutely. Well, thank you for all you do. And just real quickly, how can people get in touch with your organization if they want to just to get in touch with you or if they want to make a donation to help you uh, with getting 8,000 8, bubbles? <laughs> How can people well, get in touch with you? Well, there's two ways. Uh, they can visit our website, which is alfra.org, or they can visit us uh, on the website, I'm sorry, on the Facebook page, you know, mm -hmm. which is Alabama Family Rights Association. And um, like I said, our goal, we all volunteers just like you are. You volunteer your time because you care. And we, if you're in Alabama, join our efforts. You know, our kids, they're, they're depending on, on us, you know. And we should tell everybody, too, that um, if you are thinking of hosting a Parental Alienation Awareness Day event or Bubbles of Love, that 
Um, every event makes a difference. So don't feel overwhelmed or intimidated. You don't have to do an event with 3,000 people, um, but you can have, you can get a small gathering at a park or uh, anywhere really. Uh, every, every effort makes a difference. And if you want to get proclamations like we were talking about earlier, it, it's really not difficult to do. And, and you can contact me and I can, I can point you in the right direction. But basically, um, you can send an email to your city or, and or to your state rep. Sometimes they do the proclamations as well. It's just a very simple email uh, requesting a proclamation for Parental Alienation Awareness Day. And you want to make it easy for them. Make it easy for them. So send them the template of the proclamation with just blanks. So all they have to do is go in and put in the mayor's name and the name of the city. Um, and it's, it's really, really, it's not difficult to get proclamations. Would you agree with that? Well, I agree 100%. And, and plus, it's for a good cause. Mm -hmm. So um, just present it in a, once again, a non-adversarial approach. And the reason I keep saying that because um, if you've been alienated from your child, it is a painful process, you know, but the goal is, uh, we have a template for as how to do it right and make a difference for the next generation and also for our kids. Even if our kids cannot express that love now, they know that people out there care about them. Well, Kenneth, thank you for all that you do. You create so much awareness and education. Uh, like we talked about, you expect to, to touch 8,000 people this year. And, and that's just directly. I, 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 kind of, I see it as every bottle of bubbles that you give away is touching one person. But, you know, they go out and they tell other people about it. So the amount of awareness and education that you generate is, is really, really amazing. And I, I want to thank you for what you do. And thank you for sharing uh, what you do with everybody. Uh, because you're amazing. But really what you do, everybody could do this. Everybody can have a, a Parental Alienation Awareness Day event. Well, I learned from the best, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It, um, it, we need to support each other and help each other uh, and, and, and teach each other how to do these things. And it, it makes a big, big difference. You know, we want to have parental alienation awareness day events. Um, all over, all over the world. And we do have them all over the world, but we want to have more. So, so thanks again for sharing how you do that and for everything that you do. Okay. And just shout out to the, to the, the founder up in Canada. You know, I really, and she's just a sweetheart, you know, uh, and um, just thankful that for her vision, who would have, who would have ever thought, um, mm -hmm. you know, to try to deter someone's behavior, you just do it with love and which, you know, we, we know that's the answer anyway. Love is the answer to all of this. But I just want to say, um, you know, Savvy, I, I keep messing the name up there. That's why I let you. Starvy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but definitely appreciate her and you know, appreciate you. And thank you. Thanks you know, for having me on. Yeah, a big, a big thank you to Sarvi Emo, who was the founder of Parental Alienation Awareness Day and Bubbles of Love for her vision and uh, I know that it's very important to her that we um, keep the focus of Parental Alienation Awareness Day on the child, as you were talking about, that the, the children need to be able to love and have relationships with both of their parents and both sides of their family. So, so we always want to acknowledge her and thank her for, you know, for creating this very, very important Awareness Day. Anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? <laughs> no, that's it. Like I said, just, um, you know, there's a lot of work to be done, but we, we can do it everywhere. But anyone can, can participate, everyone, anywhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just get a bottle of bubbles and, and blow bubbles on, on or near April 25th and take some pictures and put them online. And uh, again, be sure to visit bubblesoflove.day.com where you'll find more information about Parental Alienation Awareness Day and Bubbles of Love. And thanks again, Kenneth. I will talk to you real soon. Okay. All right, bye. Bye.